In animation, smears are a way of representing motion blur by stretching or distorting the artwork or models. There are also some of the most fun frames to do in animation. So, come with me on an accelerated journey through the creation of this bird animation using Moho and Clip Studio Paint. First up, a thumbnail storyboard helps to work out what assets I actually need to create for the project. Animation is way too time consuming as it is without doing stuff I don't need to. In this example, I can see I only need to create three drawings in Clip Studio Paint. In Moho, a single rig bird can do the standing, looking and anticipation. A single drawing for the smear and another rigged bird for the flapping. Once I had my idea, it was over to Clip Studio Paint for the character designs and character drawings. As a side note, I actually draw this fast. No, really. Using brushes, blenders and a bit of erasing, I drew a single smeared wing. I'll animate this to give the impression of speedy flapping. I could easily have blurred the heck out of this, but went for something more in keeping with the painty style. With smears, pretty much anything goes. For the jump smear, I used the mesh transformation tool and the blend and erase brushes on different layers. I then collapsed everything into a single layer uh, for more messing around. I'm going for the feel of the movement as if multiple frames were squashed into one. After making sure that everything is in its correct layer and folder, all the drawings are exported as a single PSD file. And it's off to Moho. I select individual layers when importing the PSD and my file is loaded up and ready to go. Look at that. My eye group that only had one eye visible has loaded into Moho as a switch layer. Nice. Looks like my mass shadow layer isn't clipping. Not a problem. I select the body group, right click and set it to mask inside the bottom layer and it's back. The multiply setting is even kept when rendering. Also nice. To have a better control of some of the bitmaps in the project, I needed to add meshes to them. The simplest way is to select a layer and select the Create Smart Warp layer from the drawing menu. This generates a mesh that can manipulate the linked bitmap on any frame other than frame zero. If I want more control over the mesh, and I usually do, I create the mesh by hand. Here I created a new vector layer and named it something catchy. From the Draw drop-down menu, I selected Triangulate Mesh. Now, any vectors I draw on that layer will be connected by a triangulated mesh. In case you were wondering why I didn't close that shape, closing shapes within a mesh creates a hole. I selected my body layers, went to the Image tab and selected the catchily named Mesh layer that I want to control those layers. I very quickly went through the rest of the model and added meshes to the face and legs. Next up, the bird needed a skeleton. I converted the front bird layer into a bone layer by right clicking and selecting Convert to Bone. With that layer still selected, I draw out my master bone using the Add Bone tool. I call this one Handle and set its strength to zero as it's only used to move the other bones around. With that selected, I add a back, neck and head bone. I reselect the backbone and add the backside and tailbones. I then select the backbone and add wings and legs to it. Tip, when rigging, try and keep a little bend in the legs as that helps with the animation. Next, I attach the layers to the bones that will move them. For the body, I selected the body mesh layer and the body bones. Then, from the bone menu, selected Use selected bones for flexi binding. I added the face mesh to the head bone the same way. The wings and tail layers were added directly to their bones as they weren't controlled by a mesh. Once that was done, I tweaked the bone strengths to get the movement I wanted. Flexi binding is fine for the parts of the body that don't bend too much, but legs have knees and ankles, so special attention is needed, which in this case means point binding. I was actually finding it hard to see any points on the mesh layer. To fix this, with the leg mesh selected, I opened up the style palette. Selecting the shape with the shape selection tool, I can now change the colour and width of the mesh line. Ah, there they are. Using the bind points tool, I bind the points of the mesh to the nearest bones and test the rig with the manipulate bones tool. 
To tidy up the joints using Smart Actions, I select a bone and create a new action. I rotate the bone on the timeline and then tweak the mesh points so they don't look quite so painful. With the bone still selected, I create another action and rotate the bone in the opposite direction and do more surgery. I do the same for the rest of this and the other leg. And now for a little leg magic. First, I draw some bones that will become the IK targets, again setting their strength to zero. I select each shin bone, then in the Bone Constraints tab, select the appropriate bone from the target dropdown. For good measure, I turn on the squash and stretch scaling because, well, who doesn't like stretchy legs? I also turn on the independent angle constraint for the feet because I don't like them being bossed around by the legs. Well, hey, the bird looks happy. Nearly there. All that is left is to add some smart bones so I can animate the face and body with levers. First I add a bone and set its strength to zero. From the bone menu I select Make Smart Bone Dial. I name it and then create a new action. Adjust the settings and press OK. With the bone in its down position I adjust the face mesh to bring the brows down. I hop back to the main timeline and using the same techniques create other smart bones for the eyes, squash and stretch, turn and then I... oh. That's the standing bird ready to go. On to the flying bird. After basic rigging, I attach the wing smear to its own bone and animate a cycle of the wing in its up and down positions only. I'm careful to vary those positions slightly so the wing looks like it keeps moving. I duplicate the wing as a reference layer, so making changes to one wing affects both. Very handy. I flip it, scale it, and move it into position. There's only one more thing to do before I can finally start animating. I select the main folder and convert it into a switch layer. That way I can easily swap between the birds when I'm animating. So first I position the bird in frame using the camera tools. I block out the animation by moving through the timeline and keying the bird using the freeze pose command from the bone menu, or Ctrl F. I use the transform bone tool to move the bird into its key poses based on my thumbnail board. My timings are just guesses at this point and will be refined as I work through the animation. Uh, wait, what happened there? I move the head bone off the neck bone to get the bird into a position I like. This is perfectly okay as it isn't a real bird. I pose the bird so it's just starting to jump and then, using the switch layer, swap to the smear drawing. I position that, then switch to the flying bird. I position the flying bird and animate it off screen. Now, you may notice that the jump smear is only visible for a single frame, and after all that work, you barely even see it. You feel it though. Adding a timeline marker is a handy way to see where my switch layer changes on every model. Using the same techniques, I do another pass through the animation, adding some anticipation poses and blinks. I animate the flying bird arriving from the smear drawing, stretching the tail and foot by moving and scaling their bones. I also add a little overlapping action. I give the bird flight a little up and down movement to give it some texture. After that, I make more passes through the animation. It's refine and refine till I run out of time, which sadly, I've just done. Hopefully, you now have an idea of how you might use smears in your own work. Remember, Time spent planning your animation at the beginning is paid back tenfold at the end. Work in passes, big movements first and details later. You can get pretty crazy with your smears as long as the colours match and the overall shapes follow the motion. And of course you don't see them for many frames. Easing in and easing out of smears works very well indeed. Have fun and over to you.